Uh, well, thank you, Adrian, for those kind words of introduction uh, and the remarks about the Queen. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Star Trek fans uh, long have claimed that space is the final frontier, uh, but they're wrong. Time is the final frontier. A hundred years ago, uh, space travel and time travel were just so much science fiction. Today, space travel is commonplace. So could it be that in another hundred years, time travel will also be commonplace? Now, the great thing about time travel is it's very easy to imagine. You step into some machine or some sort of box, you press a few buttons, and you step out again, not just somewhere else, but somewhere else. Very easy to imagine. But can it really be done? Well, I hope by the end of the lecture this evening, I shall have convinced you that the answer to that question is a resounding maybe. <laughs> The, uh, the subject of time travel uh, really took off with the trailblazing novel written in 1895 by the science fiction writer H.G. Wells, The Time Machine. Uh, and that sort of set the gold standard for what time travel would be like and what time machines would be like. We could almost think of this as the archetypal time machine, as this cartoon makes very clear. <laughs> But, but it does have a sort of Victorian contraption air to it. And so these days, the basic story of time travel has been copied again and again and again, uh, but these days in rather more of a technological guise. And I suppose any particular year, there's another time travel story or another time travel movie. Lots and lots of them coming out. Uh, but that's, uh, that's fiction. Uh, if time travel could be done, what would a time machine really be like? Would it be like H.G. Wells? This is the remake, incidentally, by the great-grandson of H.G., Simon Wells, the remake in, uh, of the Hollywood movie in 2002, still with that sort of Victorian uh, feeling to it. So would it be something made of brass and lenses and, and, and light and, and levers and maybe steam coming out? Uh, or would it be more like the DeLorean car of uh, Back to the Future? Or better still, would it be like the famous police box in the <laughs> Doctor Who series? Now, when I'm talking about this in the United States, I usually have to explain what is a police box, because I don't think they ever existed here. And in fact, very few of them existed in Britain. But when I was a lad growing up in London, uh, you'd see these things. Now, the traditional British telephone box is, looks like that. It's a red box, you see, but the police wear blue uniform and they wanted a blue box for themselves. And so they used to go in to make telephone calls. That was before the days when the British police forces could afford two-way radios or, or cell phones, I guess they use now. So that was their means of communicating. And then, of course, technology overtook it, and these police boxes rather disappeared. So I wrote a book on time travel in, uh, I think it was 2002, and uh, the, the, uh, one of the London newspapers said, well, we must you know, do some publicity for this uh, book launch. Let's uh, go and find a Doctor Who-style police box. And we scoured the whole of London. And for those who are interested, just outside Earl's Court underground station, there remains a police box. Uh, there it is in the bottom left. It's still there. So we did a photo shoot. and that you could imagine that the vehicles passing by were sort of slowing down, seeing me standing there being photographed. Obviously thought I was being auditioned for the next part of Doctor Who, but <laughs> sa sadly not. It was just, uh, just the book launch. Um, but uh, all of these are uh, ways of imagining how we might use some sort of technological gadget to transport us through time. So the idea is easy to visualize, uh, 